Okay, hello and welcome back. Hi everybody. Um, we are now going to talk a bit about uh, modular code development and what this essentially mean uh, essentially means. Um, and we will start this uh, start this off um, essentially with a couple of questions in uh, HackMD and so to see what does co modular uh, code development mean for you. Um, what is uh, what best practices practices are recommended um, about it, uh, for it, and what do you know about programming that you wish somebody had told you earlier? I can add here that, uh, or I can ask, uh, what the, what so, the best way now is to participate. So we have. We have one and a half hours left in the workshop. And from now on, the best way to participate for everybody is to have the collaborative document open because we will we will ask you for input and we will ask you for questions. So Thomas will lead us through the sessions, but I will watch the questions, I will, I will watch the suggestions, and it will be what we will try to do is kind of an like programming improv based on your suggestions. So there will not be any no group exercises anymore. The now we all exercise together here on stream based on your input. So keep. Um, I would say the best way to participate on half of your monitor. Keep the Twitch going, and on the other half, open the collaborative document and please overwhelm us with uh, questions and suggestions. And I will. I will then be Thomas's eyes and ears and relay questions to him and suggestions. So, yeah, um, overall, um, the first thing with modular code development, uh, the idea is that, as is written there, uh, or some have already written, um, to go away from one big script and um, encapsulate individual functionalities in functions so that you can reuse them. And, um, at some point, it will start that uh, you you split uh, not only into individual functions, but you split your functions into into individual uh, Python files packages, so that um, you essentially uh, say, okay, I have for a large project, I have an input output uh, package. There is everything that has to do with input and output of data into your into or out of your program. I have a a statistics package um, where I do all my statistic uh, analysis um, and and so on and so forth. Uh, the larger the project, the more modular it should become because otherwise you it's starting to get unmaintainable. And right. So it all started with one. Typically, it all starts with one file. Can I ask you a question? Um, so this A, B, C, the questions, what would you answer here? Uh, so the questions that we ask everybody, oh, what, well, what are your? Uh, what? I think I, I I kind of answered a, um, which is essentially yeah, uh, modular code development is um splitting your code into functional um, pieces that can be reused and that are organized in a way that they are easily identifiable where what kind of or what part of your code goes to, so that if if uh, you start with a new with something new or add something new to your um, code, you have an idea where this should go. Um, best practices uh, you recommend to arrive at well-structured modular code in your programming language. Um, I'm well aware. It's essentially uh, packaging. Um, so, whether this is uh, in Python and uh, or Java, which are the languages that I use most, um, is mo mostly it's individual folders, which are the, at the same time packages. And um, you essentially put code into the, uh, into appropriate, appropriately named packages. Uh, in Python, I think it's a little bit less uh, well, less deep commonly. In Java, you often have very deep package uh, package hierarchies. 
Um, and how about question C? What do you know now? What do you know now about programming that you wish you could tell your past self if you could travel back in time ten years ago? What would you tell yourself? Uh, I I I agree with uh, the IDE, even though um, I was told that very very early on in uh, during my during my studies, where we essentially started up with uh, Java and Eclipse at the time. Um, uh, GitHub Actions is probably one of the things that, yeah, I should have started using way earlier. Um, automated tests, uh, making tests automated, um, testing as such is probably for any for anything that you want to be able to use in a year's time. Uh, yeah, testing is very, very useful uh, because it also gives docu essentially documentation and usage examples. Um, yeah, and I, I think that I think what's what's written there is very, very true. So what people write there, um, I, I, I admittedly don't have the one thing that I. Uh, that I would definitely tell my my previous self. But overall, test your code is probably the thing that I have uh, not followed enough earlier. Yeah. So let's see. We have our we have our initial function here. Um, this is essentially the um, pandas. Oh, the, that is essentially a small function that uh, prints our, or creates a figure um, for the temperatures um, for temperatures from a file. So maybe let's take a step back. We we have a data file somewhere. Yep. It's just a little bit up, and we try to make a figure out of it and uh, and again for everybody the best way to participate is i think not not trying to type along but the best way to participate now is to watch and give us suggestions we will try to solve a problem together ask us many questions and the problem we are trying to solve is we we have some data about what is it uh, temperatures, temperatures in Helsinki, in and we want to plot it so here at the moment um uh I've already put this into a um, into a Jupyter notebook. Uh, I have a function that takes an input uh, takes an uh, takes an input uh, file or that that has an input file. Um, goes through the measurements and and plots a an output. Let's no. Um, let's try to run this. So this is what comes out of it. This is essentially the file that is being created. Where does the data come from? Uh, the data so is the data was downloaded uh, from uh, from Arto. Mm -hmm. uh, no, not uh, from Imatiet and Lightos, um, from a web uh, from a web page that yeah. uh, or from a. Uh, well, I meant more like where does it come from? It comes from a file. So we are reading a file. And... We, we, are, we, we read that file with pandas read CSV and calculate the average, calculate the average temperature and, and plot the whole temper plot, plot the whole temperatures over this period. Yeah, and for so we are looking at a Python code. Now we know that not all participants here write Python, but we. We start from an example that is relatively simple. We Our focus here is not Python. Our focus is more, we take a step back and we try to see what are the building blocks, what are these building bricks that we could maybe, that could be reusable, that could be separated out, that could be uh, moved into a function. We will try to keep it simple. It's, it, this, this session will be useful even if you have never seen a Python code. and. We don't need to understand all the steps here, but the, the big picture here is we read data, we do some statistics with it, we plot the data. So at the moment, this plot, well, doesn't look very 
interesting. Um, but it's already not, not too bad because we have, there are no axis annotations, but we see that the temperature is around freezing. So if yep. zero is centigrade. And now I can, now I will act as your, as the supervisor and the supervisor comes in and says, that's very nice, but um, I would like to have more plots. Or how about, well, how about the first hundred measurements? Because here we see 25 measurements and how, can we have, um, can we have axis annotations? Can we have more plots? What if I want to see the hundred? What if I want to see the 500? So. Okay. Um... So uh, yeah, we, we we can probably have more plots. Um, we can we we can f first let's say we, we let, let let us add some labels. So um, we can essentially say um, plot dot x label, and these are the measurements. And plot dot y label. These uh, this is the temperature. In and let's imagine that we, we we got this code from Celsius. either Stack Overflow or we got the code from one of the one of the AI tools, and it's an okay starting point. But we want to now so, make it more modular. So now we at least have some labels. Um, and you also wanted to have measurements for a hundred and five hundred. That's right. Okay. Um. Hmm. Well, we, we, we can essentially create three plots. So um, four non-measurements in 100, 250, and put all this in. And let's see. So we get three plots. Okay, here you are. So what we did here, uh, just that I understand it, we we iterate over number of measurements, and it it's, takes it takes the values twenty five, one hundred, two hundred fifty. And now let me double check whether this is still all right. If um, I think if we run it now, we will get three figures, and they each is called twenty five dot png. Yeah, exactly. So um, here we do have to format this and put in the num measurements so that they it's not all written to the same file and uh, when now for the people watching this when you watch this and you are not a python developer uh, try to translate what we see not not so, how we solve it but try to translate what we try to solve in your preferred language so here we have it, replaced something hard coded 25, we'd have re replaced it by something variable. And uh, we are formatting this string. Um, instead instead of uh, saying string num measurements plus the plus PNG, we are, we are using the formatting option in Python, which is a bit more convenient. Yeah, um, the thing is, now I potentially want to plot more and more different temperatures and um i want to create something that can just plot temperatures because this is something that i might need to use in another project again or in an, at an in another place so we could think about taking this this plot or this plotting function and creating a function out of this so that we have a just a plotting function for a set of temperatures If you want okay. to do that. And so um, what will be, before doing that, what will be the advantage of having that as a separate function? Like where, what do you have in mind for the future then? Um, we, we can, for example, use this function in other, in, for, for other temperature files, um, for other, uh, for, yeah, for, for additional situations where we want to plot uh, plot temperatures, um, we might have we might at some point load uh, temperatures from a different uh, from a different uh, city or whatever, and um, don't run through the same plot uh, plot function again. So we don't want to re uh, essentially copy paste that 
uh, those lines for every city that we are um, looking for. Um, that is one potential. Uh, and we might not, well, mo most of most of what I'm just saying could probably be done by just having a for loop around it. Um, mm. But it may it makes it it makes it better readable in the end because it um you, you are if if we can put this into a, into a function um our final script will say okay load the temperatures set or get the get the temperatures get the average and plot the temperatures. That's a not, great point. Great and not having all the individual commands in there. So you, you know what you're actually doing. Because at the moment, um, yeah, there, there's the common plot results. But one thing in general code design, uh, if the code speaks for itself, so if, if it, it, it helps reading the code. Yeah, and that's a, that's a great point. So by putting in a function, not only we create a somehow reusable building block, which we can give to our colleague who also wants to plot something. But the the really nice side effect is that um, we, it will be easier to understand the code because we give it a name. We we can hide the details into, into a function that has a name. And then when I follow the code, it, it is easier for me to follow this big picture. The big picture is that this plots temperatures. And if I'm interested in understanding what it does precisely, I can look in. But if I'm not interested, I don't have to look into this function. So it will it will make it make it easier for the humans. So um... and everybody please give ask questions or give suggestions. I'm hopefully looking at the right document, but not too many questions and suggestions yet. So please give them, keep them coming. What we should do next. We also, did we say, we didn't say that in the lesson material, if anything goes a little bit too quickly here, we have an instructor guide and we may or may not follow the steps that we follow are there. Of course, we don't really know what will happen here in the, in the improv, but you will probably be able to find the steps that we did and the reasoning why we did this also later in self-study. So um, if, I, if I look at this uh, at the moment, um, there are a few things that I really don't like about this. What is it? And, um, and the, the thing that I don't I dislike the most is this, num measurements uh using the external variable that is being defined outside of the function scope oops and that is temperate temp yeah that also makes me uncomfortable the the it, thing is that if we run it, it it still works but that's because of how python works but if we know if if i copy paste it your plot temperature function because i really like it and if i copy paste it into my notebook it doesn't work uh, chances high that this will not work and it will chances high that it will complain and say that well, I don't know what non measurements is because it's undefined. So this is not this is this is not a reusable function at the moment. Um, yeah, so th th that is kind of at the moment what I dislike the most. Uh, the second thing that I don't like is that these labels are defined outside of the function because the the this is part of the plot temperatures in my opinion. This is something that uh, that I want to kind of put in there, and um, it might actually make my function more flexible if I allow measurements and oh, I can't type. Uh, and if I allow the labels to be um, provided as input arguments, because then it's essentially plotting of data. Um, right, and it became more general. Somebody suggested that there is a typo in the plot temperatures function. I'm looking at it. Do I see? Yeah, that? That, that, uh, entirely possible. 
I don't see it yet. Maybe it got fixed, but maybe we'll not let, see let, it. Let, let, let's see. Um, it does run, so it seems like there is not a typo anymore. Yeah. And same, uh, also good suggestion number 62. Same problem with mean. Also, the the value mean is, it works in, in this notebook, but it will mm -hmm. not work in the other notebook where we copy paste this into. Yeah, um, absolutely true. Um, however, one thing I would actually do here is I would probably calculate the mean within the plot temperatures or plot the mean somewhere else. So have a plot mean and a plot temperatures function. Um, okay. Personally, I would... This is, this is now actually a difficult question because um, it really depends what you want to achieve. Um, if you want to have uh, have plotting commands later on, then plot mean is probably its own function. And the second function is plot data. Um, if you want, if you are really more aiming, uh, aiming towards plot temperatures, you could leave it in the same, um, same and say plot temperatures plus mean. So changing that function. Um, what I what I would do now, I, I will create it, its own function for plot mean. And essentially, uh, no. Get this function out of here. Um, and in the meantime, I can comment on the suggestions on the collaborative documents. We could have, instead of downloading the CSV file, uh, we could have used the API directly. I think the sort of Finnish Meteorology Institute has an IP API. We could pull the data directly from, from their web API. Could have been an interesting yep. change. Mm, yes. Uh, but probably I'm not, I'm not sure if we have the packages installed in the in the quadrifinary environment uh, for yeah. this. No, let's not worry about it now. I don't think so, we have time to to do this now. But now we have to so, follow. Now, actually, suggestion sixty four. We should pass on also the, how many measurements to calculate the mean. The nice thing is that Python knows it and uh, Thomas nicely did that because Thomas uses this length, length temperatures so we can deduce it from the length of the list. Um, yeah, so uh, da, 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 where were we? Um, act actually now this is this part here is essentially a plot data. Precisely. It doesn't have to be temperatures. It can be. Thanks for the type. So th th this this now can be anything. And this is now. Even even though this is something that I think um should rather not be in here. Or the safe fig could be in there. That's fine. It's more the um, the name of that output file should probably be something different. How would you like to call it? Like temperatures dash twenty five. I mean. Uh, no, no, I I I would oh, at least in this function leave it leave it free. Yes. Okay, but let's so, also not do too much. Uh, uh... Premature optimization right. here either. I mean, uh, okay. but, uh, but a, a good point. I mean, we maybe we should to make it really general. Uh, I think we should pass on the name, the name of the file, and then it can be set outside, and then the function can plot anything and it can have any name. We 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 actually at the moment have a problem, and that is um, that we either need to call plot mean in the plot data to keep our mean lines 
or we need to move the plot figure and the sh uh, all the show stuff somewhere else. Which I would say um, it's probably not plot data because it is still plot temperatures. It does have this mean thing in. If if we now if uh, the problem is if if we would now run it at the moment we don't have a, have a mean being uh, part of the functionality, so now now our mean is gone. To get the mean back in, we need to put uh, put the plot mean in here. Let's do it then. And later, I would say this is good enough for the moment. Later, one could organize it differently, but I think this is. I think good enough for our current purpose. We have a function that pots and it calls another function. I would name it like this. Sounds good. Because it's not just the data, it's also the mean that is being plotted here. And then it makes sense. Um, okay. And the discussion that we just had is also uh, question 66 is what is the right balance between making a function that is very specific versus trying to make it very general? Like where should we stop in this <laughs> uh, on, make, on the make, way between specific and general? Make it as general as possible um, and as specific as necessary. Uh, the um, what, what I would say is don't go to extreme length to make it general if it's a function uh, in your code. If you, uh, the, the more you expect your code to become a package for uh, used by others, the more general, if, if it can be more generalized, it should become. The, um, but don't spend a ridiculous amount of time on making a general um, just, for the sake of having a more general function. And if the generalization of your function makes your function as such very unreadable or very ugly um, in its logic or whatever, don't do it. Better have, better have then two functions, two clean functions for the two slightly different purposes mm -hmm. than one, one function monster that yeah, it does both, but uh, has if clauses and whatnot, and uh, needs it needs to have multiple different types of possibilities in there. Okay, that's great advice. So it is a process. <laughs> what should we do next? One suggestion was, uh, how about tests? I think that's a great idea, but we will. I'm, I've noted it down. We will come back to that because I think we should fix a few more things first. Uh, one thing we could do is uh, to, now we have a function for plotting, but we could also have a function for reading data. Yep. If you think that's a useful thing to do. Um, in general, definitely, because we might have different um, input files. Um, so our goal here is now what what Thomas is working on is we are the code got a little bit too well if if we want to have multiple plots it would get a little bit too long if we copied copy the whole entire code three times so instead we, we decided we iterate over the values now measurements and we move building blocks from the main code into functions with the goal of making them reusable and with the goal of making the whole thing more understandable. So, um, we essentially then can copy this and say okay and now we have a function that can read also other csv files it doesn't have to be temperatures.csv and and also we have a function that can read other columns 
maybe we are interested in something else at the earth temperature, then we can read a different column. Yeah, uh, so we would then have data up. In the meantime, we're getting good suggestions. I'm noting them down. So I have a lot to do for you, Thomas, but no okay. stress. So what, what, what next? Uh, so one thing, one easy thing is there is an in, in, input file typo. So at the read CSV line. Oops. Yeah, me and typos. Uh... No, let's see. Let me have a look. We, this is, should we, does it still run? Yep. Also, should we try what is a good practice with notebooks from time to time? It can be good to, uh, like, what I like to do is sometimes from time to time, rest oh, we never saved, huh? Did we? No, probably not. Now I did. Should we also, uh, sorry for, for so many suggestions here, but should we save and put it under Git? Because we have been, like, teaching Git here for a couple of days. Uh, makes sense, yes. Uh... So let's do that. Just in case that we don't want to lose this precious work, we have uh, we have now this repository. So let's create a Git repository, Git init, and what should we add to it? I mean, in doubt, I would add everything. Um, because I would this... definitely not add the PNGs. Okay. Because they they are output files. Um, I'm. Okay with adding the temperatures uh, so that we don't need to download them again. All right. Or that we don't need to get them from a remote, but have it with our with our data. The output files, um, th those should be re reproducible. If they are not, then. All well, right. Yeah. So then we have we have ambition to create something reproducible. Let's do that because our ambition is that even five years later, somebody can then regenerate these these PNG figures. So we have now committed temperature CSV and the script. Very good. Now, if we mess up, we can always go back. And uh, now this is still running. What I also like to do from time to time on the notebook is to like rerun the whole notebook and restart it to make sure it doesn't remember any variables which I already removed. Good. So this is still working. Excellent. Yep. What next? Couple of suggestions. One was, wouldn't it be a good practice in Python to have a main function? And I think that's a good idea, but it's a little bit Python specific. But I think it will help us later if we create, if we put the main code, which is if we put that into a main function, it will it will help yep. us in a, in a moment. That, that that actually will lead to uh, quite some refactoring in this code. Because mm -hmm. now we do have the situation that we. Uh, and what does refactoring mean? Um, or I, actually, no, it doesn't, because we, we have almost gotten rid of the num measurements, almost, because we didn't hear. So our read data does need a number of rows. Otherwise, it will fail, because now we no longer have the num measurements. This was yeah. an impure function. So it was the, exactly. So this is a function with side effects. Oh, let's and rows. Very good. Also, somebody noticed that the figures have the first figure has annotations, but the other figures don't. And that is because we yep. we have other side effects that are implicit. Oh, that one. That that is something that should probably go into the plot. Yep. Did Very good. Mean? And we can also set them as input arguments so that we have an Yeah, small small but good good suggestion is we could should give it a different name than untitled. <laughs> uh details. Um <laughs> Do we yes. call it test? Oh, test two? No, no. Oh, let's let's call it something descriptive. 
I will rename it in a second. I would suggest actually to name it um, temperature plotting for now. Uh, rename notebook. And, and small things like this, they really help. Or just imagine about the next person or yourself in two months. Like, what was this untitled? Was it the... Now we know what it is. These IPy and the checkpoints, shouldn't we add them to git ignore? Uh, good point, yes. Because these are generated files by uh -huh. the notebook. I think we don't want to have them in the git repository. Let's see. Did git notice? No. Um, this is something that is inconvenient because we should have. Uh, I shouldn't have renamed it in the uh, in here, and I will rename it back. Because uh, yeah. Wasn't it? Ah, automated pacing doesn't work. Um, so what, what are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, uh, no, I'm actually wondering, wasn't, um, Resetting think, it uh, so that it's not being added. And I think I always, it, yeah. Git add Richard? the deleted file name, and I think it goes away. Yeah. Status. Yeah. Okay. Git move. So now we rename the file, but also we tell Git about it. I have a couple of more suggestions. Also, to everybody, we, we will take a break. So we will not forget a break. Around the full hour, uh, there will be a break. But until then, we can still get a few more things done. This is great. We have it so, on the Git. Yep, but I need to close this. Oh, uh, yeah, because we have the, the wrong file name open now. Yep. Mm. So. One question that came up, we can discuss it, is now we have everything in one cell. Um, how do you do that normally? Like, when do you split notebook cells into several cells? Should we have should we have uh, one function per cell, or how do you it, do it, that? It, admittedly, I, I'm the wrong person to ask that because I tend not to use notebooks. Um, mm. per personally. I would pro I would probably very very early start moving all the plotting functionality into its own file, and we will do that in a moment. I think we will notice uh, at the moment when we start testing it, we mm -hmm. will probably notice that then then it probably doesn't fit into here. I can comment. So I'm not a super power user either, but I can comment on like the granularity is that what I see often is that the I see I see often the imports to be on top of the notebook as you have. And sometimes they are in a separate cell. I would put code into a separate cell if either I want to make that easier to copy paste into somewhere else. So it's like a unit. Or if I need to describe it. Because in not in, in the Jupyter notebooks, we can do we can have code, but we can also have markdown cells. Same idea in R markdown. Um, and if I want to describe a unit, then I would maybe put that unit into a separate cell. Yeah. The advantage of having everything in one cell is we don't get, we cannot get the problem that we run the cells not in the right order because we only have one. So it has also advantages here for when when developing it. I'm. Hmm. And now we don't. It's not running anymore. Oops, but the good thing we have Git. We can always go back, but let's see. Any error messages? Nothing happens? No, that is exactly the strange thing at the moment. Is it stuck? So what I do when I get no output from, from the Jupyter at all, then I typically go on, I restart kernel and run all cells because maybe it's, it choked on something. Restart the kernel, yes. 
and now run all cells. We have only one. Hmm. Oh, okay, now we have a mystery, but now maybe somebody can help here from audience. What did we forget? Hmm. And why did we not get any input? Do we have a file called temperature CSV out of track? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Can we, okay, I can, the way I would do it, uh, of course we could go now with some debugger into it, but I would, I would maybe comment out the plotting and see yeah. whether we managed to even read it. In, in chat, function. someone says nobody is calling the main. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> we have a code without any side effects. <laughs> <laughs> we, we we went too far with um, pure functions. <laughs> mm. Okay. Okay. So we didn't define the end rows. Yes, because we. So tell me okay. how you look at this arrow there. What what did you look at when you examined this um, error? Okay. Uh I'll quickly re get Let's this. make it wrong again and then Yeah. Because that's also good so, skill. Like how do you you get this thing? Where do you start okay. looking at it and how do you read it's it? Essentially uh it's a it told me N rows is not defined. I know roughly where N rows occurred in my code. And yeah, the, there is this n rows, which should at this point be the number number of measurements, which is the number of rows that we want to read in. So this is not defined here, obviously, so it needs to be replaced. And before you fix it, uh, wait a moment. So the the essential thing, which which is a skill, because Thomas has been looking at at errors for many many years, is that you you started reading it from the back. From... So, so from below. So sometimes that is the helpful thing. You know, what we he what we see here is the trace back. It's it, like a little trace back to the error, but you started reading from the bottom. It actually it it depends on the programming language. Exactly. Um, uh, one kind of important thing for me uh, with uh, reading error messages is, um, if it if it's some kind of stack where it says okay in line so and so and line so and so and line so and so look for the last bit of of code that was written by you because in 99% of the time i did the uh, i did the mistake so I, i'm i'm looking for okay where where in my code did uh, did something go wrong and only if i really have spent quite a lot of time noticing that no 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 my stuff is everything in my stuff is correct then i start looking into okay is something wrong in the uh, libraries that I'm using? If they are open mm -hmm. source, or if they are not open source, um, writing a bug report against uh, whatever library I'm using. Yeah. But under normal circumstances, I would assume I did the mistake, so must be somewhere in my code. Yeah. So I also I look at the this trace either from the bottom or from top, depending on language, until I find something that I don't recognize anymore. And that's often the point. And um, before we move on, so I have a couple of ideas. One is, and, and they were not my ideas, they come from the audience. We should add testing. I'm asking myself, should we, we need to have a break? Should we take a break now? Should we take a break in a moment and then continue? We can also take a break and we can collect ourselves and then we can work on testing and we can collect other suggestions in the meantime. Does that sound fun? Sounds fine with me, yes. So let's do a 10 minute break. We would be back, uh, well, if you want to be very precise, at, at the hour point 59. We would restart and continue here uh, on this exercise. And in the meantime, please collect ideas, write them down, but also stretch your legs. See you in 10 minutes. Bye. And we are back on stream. After the break, it's the last half an hour of the workshop. We have a few more ideas of what to do with this example, and we hope we get many more suggestions from you. One thing that I thought during the break is that if I would now try to run this notebook on my computer, 
it will it would probably not work and the error that i would see is cannot find package pandas cannot find package matplotlib so it's about the imports on top and my question to thomas is how would you communicate to me that i need to install pandas and matplotlib as libraries otherwise this notebook um, will yeah uh, requirements.txt um so essentially adding a requirements.txt that says pandas lib. that's nice because now i now i know what i need later when the project is finished and when we are publishing it then we can put in the version numbers then we can say pandas equals equals i don't know two point yeah. something something but during development already listing the requirements in a file helps me okay yeah but that, that's how i would uh, communicate in that yeah. instance yeah and also the question on 94 should we specify the versions we can we should definitely do it when publishing and when depositing the example on zenodo as we have learned um, during development as things are moving or maybe i rephrase if i'm only on my old computer i often don't put the version in but i might put the version in once i give the code to somebody else because then then it will help them so maybe we should have them but for the moment let's keep it as it is i want to also come back to a suggestion a few questions ago and that was so this morning we learned about testing where are the tests here and um can we add some tests and how would you do it <sighs> um okay if, if if we are going to testing i would probably um move out of uh move this whole thing out of a notebook because yes there are options to test notebooks but i find them very cumbersome and artificial uh because notebook is for running and um not for yeah the, the purpose of notebook is not so much um de developing code in my opinion um, but more running existing code. Mm -hmm. So uh, if I want to test things here, I would, pro uh, yeah, I, I, I would essentially get, uh, put all of this into uh, into a Python file and use it as a use Python files from it. So in that instance, um, let's say we have a functions.py. where we are putting all of this. Mm -hmm. um, we still have our thing here. There is also a function in notebooks, but I, I always have to look for it. So one can export a notebook into a script. Yes. But this, also, uh, but this works I, as well. So if, I, if I'm not mistaken, this should still be working. Um, but maybe. can you explain what you what you did here? Because that's interesting. So what what I did is I moved all of the uh, all of the fun what I think I need to restart the kernel because what is it currently doing? Now I'm a bit puzzled. Um, the the idea was uh, I moved the functionality out and import essentially all defi defined functions so all things that are in here back um back in here but now i'm a bit puzzled because i can't run them anymore um ah, okay so now we do get Read data is not defined. So that um, doesn't work. That is entirely possible that this is um, due to me mainly coming from uh, Java. Uh, no. Wait. So I also don't see the error. I can explain what we are trying to do here. We, as a first step okay. of moving out of a notebook, we put functions into a separate file. And 
this is interesting because this now we can import functionality from an other file into notebooks. This can be interesting if I want to reuse the same function in a couple of notebooks without copy pasting it. But I'm a bit puzzled. Okay. So now we're I need, to add, I need to explicitly name them. Okay. Um, so that uh, the starter didn't work, but I thought it should work in Python, should it? It should work, but this is anyway, I think, nicer practice because now we see more explicitly where things what? come from. Yeah. Yeah, and we don't get into the problem that if the if the function is defined in different um, in different imports, um, we run into oops, what happened here? So now now we have we have this function file, and we can essentially now create a test file. Okay, so do you do you personally prefer to have tests in a separate file or in the same file? Um, the thing is, um, I prefer them not to be in the same uh, in the same file, uh, mainly because as soon as you're getting a larger project, you will separate them anyways. Um, because you will have a test folder and a source folder normally, mm -hmm. and latest at that point, you then need to start cutting all the files out, uh, all the tests out of your of your function files, mm -hmm. um, and I prefer just to start with the test functions there directly. Good. Also, somebody asked a uh, question in 98. Good question. Should we have, should we collect all the functions into one file or should we have one file per function? One thing we could do, and I don't think we have to do it today, is that the name functions is not very descriptive because yes. it's, uh, it collects just all the functions. So it might be later might be more interesting to have one file called statistics and it collects all the statistics functions and then we could have a file called plot and it could collect all the plotting stuff okay um let, 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 let's do this properly um so we have an io.py which is our read data so it's at the moment IO for input and output yeah oops not txt And this needs. This one needs pandas because yep. it uses pd dot. This one needs pandas, and we rename this to uh, plotting. Um, and then we have this as tests plotting. And another new file, test io.py. So the, the, this is at the moment the amount of files that I think is still sensible. Um, mm -hmm. If if we had if we had moved the mean calculation here into its own function, then yeah, we could also have a statistics.py. But I think that is at the moment for our project size over the top. Yeah, what I find useful is uh, to split things as soon as it's difficult to name it, because then yep. if I have difficulties naming a file or a function, that probably too many things inside. Yeah, that that sounds extremely sensible. Yes. So um, for test IO, uh, we do have the io.py, um, and essentially, wait. Now I need to remind myself again of um, uh, not this, but the. What are you looking for? Uh, essentially reminding myself um, about the testing and uh, whether I needed to import. Yeah, I needed to import the. So you. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah, from uh, IO import read data. And let's add one test. Actually, are we testing the read data one? This may be the most difficult to test. <laughs> should we start uh, with, should we test this, uh, the mean? I think that's easier. Yeah, but but we don't have a mean. We only have a mean plot. Uh -huh. And the plotting is, uh, I think actually the plotting is quite 
difficult to test. The plotting is difficult to test. I was I was thinking that we could write a test for us the statistics function. Test reading because um of course we can work on this. So just just so, to have timing, we have I think we have roughly 10 minutes left, maybe 15. And then we will summarize the workshop. So what what I would do now, I would look into my data that I have here. Because mm -hmm. um, at the moment, uh, I will uh, I will take these temperatures, and um, we want to have the air temperature. Um, actually, I would probably test two things. So, uh, read data. Um, so temp data is read data temperatures. dot csv and what uh, let, let's for uh air um where is our main eh, blind yeah. yeah this is a bit inconvenient from the size wise this is way too much, but so now, uh, and we want to have. Oh, let's take actually only one for for, for this first step. Um, uh, only one thing is fine, and we can essentially now assert that um, uh, temp data one. Is that correct? Is for pandas. Radaman? Yeah, there you're asking questions. So I there I also need to search. <laughs> I, I I will assume it's correct. Yeah. So I'm using pandas not on a weekly basis unfortunately yeah so that's my to, problem as well I have to like relearn it every time but it's a great it's a great library uh, so here we are testing that temperature so the, the first thing is I te testing whether I, I read the first line correctly. Should it be zero instead of one? Um, yep, 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 yep. Yes, yes. So, but this is not everything that I need to test here um, because there are more options, um, and I would like to know if this if a different, um, let's say time zone and also one um this should be utc and let's take uh let's see if that we are not only reading the first element but now let's read 500 elements and then we are asserting that temp data um, minus one, so the last element. And what is the fifth five hundredth element here? So I need five hundred and one, hopefully. So that is three point seven. So, um, and there is a. Let's see. I think this should be okay. Let's try this out. No. Um, cannot import name, read data from. I yep. Why? Okay, what is wrong with here? Yeah. 
Have we saved this file? I hope I saved it. Mm, let's see. That saving didn't change it. Oh! <laughs> okay. Is IO uh, a built in module name? Yes. <laughs> okay, so we are good lesson about naming. We shouldn't use names that are already, um, which, which you can actually see from the error message. So if I read the error message properly, uh, it tells me that it wants to load the IO from Python 3.10, which is definitely not the folder that I'm in. So, okay, let's um, um, don't call this IO, read data. I get, uh, I think data yeah. IO. Would probably data input output. Uh, and then so let's try to get this test to run, and then we can have a bit more discussion. Because looking at the time, I think we should maybe yeah. discuss how we yeah. do we will, how we will move from here. Uh no, that that wasn't the. Okay, that would would you want to move on and show command line interface maybe? Yeah. If this Yeah, I think we shouldn't spend too much yeah. time on getting this to run. Uh, also answering a question that oh, we should not try to test a library function because this has been test tested well by other people. Here we our goal is really to test our own functions. Yeah, okay. Um General idea, yeah, we, we would like to test. Uh, we need to write that test properly. It doesn't work at the moment. Um, mm. But that's real life. So what, what what would you, let's say we get the test to work. What would you do next with this project? Um, what would I do next? Um, I would probably start. Uh, I can give you a suggestion. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, as as you mentioned before, um, command line options, uh, command line interface, so that I can can run this this code without uh, or for example on a cluster or something with different input uh, input arguments. Yes. So the idea is that if we if you open up your main code, just to remind, where is it? That was at the moment it's still here. Yeah. Um, but so, we. So here we have a we, we iterate over a number of measurements, 25, 100, and I don't see the rest, 250, I think. And the the idea would be the next step could be that what if can we can we generalize this script so that we can decide how many measurements we want to plot without modifying the script? Because once we can do that, and we will do it with, with a command line interface. Once we can uh, get any number of measurements without modifying the script, then we can. It, it becomes easier to use because people can use it and they don't have to understand Python. Uh, also, it becomes easier to use with tools like SnakeMake or on the cluster, or if I want to run, generate 200 different plots, then I can iterate outside of the script. Mm -hmm. So I, I we need to maybe ask Richard, do we have even time to show it? Or should we what do we do? Because now we have 10 minutes left in the workshop. I think we can quickly show the general concepts of um, how it would work. Mm -hmm. I would agree. What we what we can also do is we can open up the instructor guide because there we have one solution to this. Yeah, that would essentially be what I would mm -hmm. Do with uh, so click is a command line argument um, interpreter or library, and with click you can have um, can add options to certain commands. So the main is a click command. Um, you can say, okay, num measurements. And we 
that if you're interested in the solution, we, we have a solution to this in the lesson material under instructor guide. Click is only one of several options to do this. But what Thomas is doing here is that we will add a couple of lines, not too many. I think we add maybe three or four lines. But what we get then is we get a command line interface. So we can run our script. It, it will have a help text. And I'll cheat now. Um, yeah, that was very fast. Uh, yeah. Um, actually, we don't have an output file. We didn't uh, didn't do this for the output file. Our output files will still be named uh, depending on the number of um, objects because otherwise it's more uh, it's a lot more um, modification yeah. uh, necessary. So and let's see what we got now. So with very little modification, we got a lot out of it. Let's see this in practice. So no measurements and then comma in underscore file. Is it in underscore? Underscore. Yeah. yeah, it will understand that it it will understand that it matches the in dash. <laughs> and yeah, the, now that can go. And now we decide outside of the script, whatever we want. Yeah. Okay, and I'm not sure if we need that now because of a click, but I will edit. Yeah, good point. So that's a this this is detail. Python specific, um, hmm. and don't worry about it. But the takeaway here is that command line interfaces that we will see they exist in all languages. So there is also in your language there is a library for this, and it can be a really good thing to add. So um, now here we can essentially, uh, okay. I will remove the, all the PNGs. And now if I call- So try to run the Python, uh, what is the temperature uh, plotting and dash dash help. Oops. Yeah, equals equals instead of only one equal. Did I? Wait, um, I need to I need to close a few files. This is too much stuff. Oops, sorry. No problem. Ah, it's not called. Uh, okay, from. Data IO import read data from plotting import plot mean. So yeah, we get the information about the help and what the what the things mean. And now I can num measurements. Uh, let's say 35 and minus minus in file. And that's nice because the, so the help text that we get here, we get that out of, from our description that we added. So these three, four lines, they now generate the help text and we can provide the number of measurements from the outside. And that's very, very powerful. So whenever in your script, whenever you need to, for any modification, you have to go in and change the file, the number, maybe it is asking for a command line interface. Um, now, one important thing that um, happens at the moment. So this uh, script doesn't finish because I still have a figure open. So it, it plots the figure, it writes the figure, but it shows the figure. And as long as this figure is open, uh, Python doesn't close. So we, we could, in the plot function, uh, and we should, if we want to run this um, without interaction and in the end, uh, we should close the uh, close the plot uh, plot again after it's it's written out, but I won't do this now. Um, but this is essentially the plot that was generated, and if I close that, the command finishes, and I now have this 35.png um, that I can probably open and no can't. Okay, 
I would have expected that. Hmm. Okay. I would have expected that uh, Jupiter has a proper way to show these, but okay. Yeah. It's there. Great work. I mean, in in roughly one hour, you you got very far here from from a starting point. I think we we learned a lot. I also appreciate the very many suggestions and questions that came in. Uh, what next, Richard, Thomas? Are we concluding this session? Moving on to 